Tonight, the U.S. government has made sustainable aviation fuel a cornerstone of its plan to decarbonize flying. And yet... It is absolutely a drop in the bucket. You're talking about 0.1% approximately. So, so something less than a relative drop in the bucket, right? Correct. I mean, it is, it is very, very low. Well, we're going to hear about why it matters anyway. That and more coming up on Marketplace. That's next on WNYC. All Things Considered is back at 7 o'clock. It's 40 degrees outside in New York City at the moment. Cloudy. Rain tonight, mostly after midnight, and that'll last through the morning tomorrow. We'll see temperatures at about 40 tonight. Tomorrow, higher on 48 degrees in the afternoon. It'll be pretty breezy throughout that rain tapering off by the afternoon. The weekend's looking chilly. We'll see temperatures in the mid-30s, but by next week, unseasonably warm temperatures in the upper 50s, potentially. It's WNYC at 6.30. WNYC supporters include Neon presenting Perfect Days, following the life of a man in Tokyo who embraces and finds peace in life's simple pleasures. Starring Koji Yakusho, Academy Awards eligible, now playing in theaters. WNYC, independent journalism in the public interest. 93.9 FM and AM820, NPR News and the New York Conversation. On the program today, our series Breaking Ground takes to the air, kind of, from American public media. This is Marketplace. Marketplace is supported by Twilio Segment. Segment brings customer data together for real-time insights, so companies know each individual like they are their only customer. Learn more at Segment.com. And by Microsoft Visio, helping users create powerful visuals to bring their best ideas to life with ready-to-use templates and thousands of customizable shapes. Microsoft.com slash Visio. And by the American Opportunity Index, a new ranking of how well companies invest in talent and advance employees' careers. More at AmericanOpportunityIndex.org. In Los Angeles, I'm Kai Riznal. It is Thursday today, the 22nd of February. Good as always to have you along, everybody. We are going to start the program today with two pieces of audio. Once it's really rocking and rolling, you don't need as much government intervention, but you do in the early going. That's one. His name is Gene Gabolis. We're going to get back to him later. This, from a conversation I had with New Deal historian Price Fishback, is number two. So as a guy who studies this stuff and now is, you know, your your area of, of academic expertise now was 90 years ago. Do you think in 90 years we're going to be talking about Biden and what he was trying to do with all this spending he's doing now? Uh, no, I think this is a drop in the bucket relative to what's going on. Our series Breaking Ground is the show today. What the give or take two and a half trillion dollars from the Inflation Reduction Act, the Infrastructure Law and the CHIPS Act are going to mean for this economy and the way the government is in it. We started last month with the New Deal, the best example of how federal dollars can change the way government is in this economy. What the Biden administration is doing is not repeat not another New Deal, but in complicated and invisible and sometimes contradictory ways, this could be a similar turning point. And that gets us to those two pieces of audio. Today on the program, a single product and the government helping to create a market for it. It is absolutely a drop in the bucket. You're talking about 0.1% approximately. So, so something less than a relative drop in the bucket, right? Correct. I mean, it is, it is very, very low. The bucket, or buckets, actually, that we're talking about here are the fuel tanks of the roughly 100,000 commercial airplanes that take off and land on this planet every single day. The drop is something called sustainable aviation fuel, SAF for short. So it's not many interviews I have to climb in a van for. Where are we going? There's $245 million from the Inflation Reduction Act earmarked to help SAF producers make more of it and a tax credit to make SAF cheaper for their customers to buy. That doesn't sound like a whole lot of money in a $23 trillion economy, but government dollars can do things that private dollars just can't. 
first stop is uh, going to be at the rail cars. And we'll talk more about it, you know, okay. when we reach All right. there. All right. Paramount, California, about 15 miles east of Los Angeles International Airport, is home to the first commercial scale SAF plant in the world, owned by a company called World Energy. Okay, we're going to uh, go through a different gate and enter, you know, the plant. The plant's director of operations, Sumir Sukhtankar, gave me a tour in the aforementioned van. I guess the point is this is a big place. This is a big place, yes. The plant covers about 65 acres. People use bicycles to get around. Uh, we just got to be careful whenever, whenever we are outside uh, to be uh, careful about, you know, golf carts, you know, forklifts, some of the heavy equipment. The global economy uses around 90 billion gallons of jet fuel every year, which explains how aviation accounts for somewhere between 2 and 3 percent of global emissions. SAF goes into airplanes just like conventional jet fuel. The big difference is the source material, which is why Samir Sutankar and I started on the railroad tracks leading into the plant. You know, we receive our feedstock through rails. When, when, when you say feedstock, what are you talking about? So uh, it could be, you know, vegetable oils, but right now what's on the track is, uh, you know, non-edible or waste tallow. Waste tallow, like from yeah. beef tallow and that beef kind of tallow? tallow? That, that is right. Really? Yes. So this is, sorry, I'm just looking at the capacity. This is 25,901 gallons of beef tallow? Yes, that's roughly uh, counted in like barrels, so roughly 550 to 600 barrels, barrels of, of, beef tallow. of beef tallow. Okay. Yeah. So it comes in here, and there are one, two, three, four, as far as the eye can see, tanker cars, 600 barrels apiece. Then what? Okay, so once uh, the feedstock comes in, and here in this case, we are working with tallow. Normally, tallow has the consistency of, you know, uh, Crisco. I, I don't so, know, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like really buttery. Okay. Right? So before we can unload it, yeah. you know, we have to melt it. And to melt it, we use steam. Is that, is that what I hear going through there? That's right. That sound you hear is the steam that we are currently, you know, melting the tallow so it becomes wow. liquid, and then we are able to pump it. That's amazing, but also, ew. I just, <laughs> ew. <laughs> that melted tallow gets pumped into a processing unit to remove impurities. Then it gets split into biodiesel and saf and some other stuff. I would yep. like to take you to the lab or Let's the laboratory, um, you know, where we... Uh, you're, in, you're in charge. Okay. Back in the van we go to a building a couple of hundred yards away. So this is hey, how are you? Our lab manager. I'm Kai. Nice to see you. Nice For a look at the finished product. Oh, this was, this was, this was made high. like what? Was this, this made zero. today? Yes. 6.45 this morning. Look yes, at that. Yes, yes, yeah. That's the Jet A. That's the sample from the unit just came in. Like so. Vinay Panwar, the quality manager, hands me a glass bottle with a clear liquid inside. If you open that bottle... You're gonna, can you're I, gonna can I actually open it? Yes, yeah, you can yes, yeah, open yes, it you can. and you can smell it. Just don't so taste it. And then he put it side by side with conventional jet fuel for a burn test. And what, am, what am I looking for so now? As you, as you light you, this you on will fire. See it right now, once I'm gonna set it on fire, <laughs> no, you're gonna no, see the smoke. No pressure here. <laughs> Vinay, man, you blow us up, we're done. No, no, it's, we make sure we're, we're safe. Oh, <laughs> that's wild. Look at that. Okay. So, so, we'll see so a petroleum jet is burning dirty with smoke and gross stuff, and the renewable is nice and clean. So that thing you were saying before about what comes out of the tailpipe actually is different, right? It it's, matters. It's different, yes. You know, you can see there's a lot of, you know, particulate emission right. from the, the, the conventional jet, right. but you can see almost nil from a right. renewable jet. So that's the scene, as we say in radio. One kind of fuel, standard petroleum Jet A, burning with a bunch of black soot and smoke coming off the top, and another, sustainable aviation fuel, burning visibly cleaner. Here, then, is the context. Do you know, off the top of your head, you probably do, how much SAF contributes to the overall jet fuel supply right now in American aviation, or, or globally, if you know it? You are talking about 0.1% approximately. I'm sorry, 0.1%. Correct. So, so something less than a relative drop in the bucket, right? Correct. I mean, it is, it is very, very low. Bupendra Kandelwal is Associate Professor of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Alabama. And from last about 12 odd years, the only thing which I'm doing is how do these different types of SAFs and alternative fuels 
uh, behave in aircraft. You might have seen headlines last year about the first transatlantic flights using 100% SAF. Richard Branson was on board one of them. The Biden administration has a goal of getting to 3 billion gallons of SAF production by 2030, which is, wait for it, a 19,000% jump from what we produced in 2022. Drop in the bucket. As I said a minute ago, the feds have set aside $245 million in the Inflation Reduction Act and a per-gallon SAF tax credit to make that happen. That is the government in the economy in a way that only Washington can do at scale as it tries to create a market for sustainable aviation fuel. And uh, just to give you rough numbers, like uh, there are a handful of SAF plants in U.S., and to produce enough SAF within U.S., you need hundreds of plants. Each plant costs upwards of three, four hundred million dollars, five hundred million dollars. Trained workforce and all the materials to build it. It's not going to happen overnight. I mean, we're talking about decades to reach those sorts of levels. Sorry, I'm obliged to point out here that if these plants cost three or four hundred million dollars a piece and the Biden administration has... I think 250-ish million dollars to to spend on SAF production. We're not getting there e- even maybe in a decade. It's going to be several decades. I absolutely agree with you. Creating a market for a new technology like SAF, which involves heavy industrial processes, takes time, way longer than a single presidential administration. So here's your required reminder that we are in an election year, so there is no guarantee that any of this investment is going to last. Of course, private industries can play a role in it, but the biggest challenge is the cost of SAF, because this is the first time in aviation history, at least, where a new technology is being brought in, which goes negative on your account books. Unlike increases in aircraft efficiency, better engines, or higher tech materials. Using SAF makes flying more expensive, not less. It can cost up to 10 times as compared to jet fuel. Well, so since aviation is actually a business, Professor, that doesn't seem very sustainable. I, th- that is the whole point. That is the whole point. SAF is a nascent industry. It's a new technology trying to get a foothold. But... Without government investment and interest and push, this is not going to happen. What role the federal government should play in scaling up industries like this one has been debated for decades. And with SAF, what we're really talking about here are the strategies that government ought to use to fight climate change. Tell me exactly um, uh, who you are and what you do. Um, My name is Candelaria Vergero, and I'm a PhD candidate in the program of Earth System Science at the University of California, Irvine. The topic of my dissertation focuses around net zero emission targets. Other than the fact that you might actually be the one to save humanity and the planet, uh, what was it that made you want to get into this? (laughs) I really wish so. (laughs) But it would take a lot of effort if people are doing a lot more than I'm trying to do. Um, I was, I don't know, always passionate about the environment. And then aviation is super interesting. It's uh, considered one of these hard to decarbonize sectors. There are other industries where the path to decarbonization is clear. Cars, for example, are on the road to electrification. It is a long and difficult road with economic and logistical and political hazards along the way. And governments have been trying to incentivize EVs for decades. Airplanes, though, are a different story. There's nothing electric or hydrogen powered on the market that can replace the big passenger jets flying today. And it struck to me personally because there's a, there are a lot of movements shaming people on flying, and I don't really think that's the solution. I mean, I'm personally, I come from Argentina, and my family is. Part of it is in the East Coast, part of it is in Lebanon, another part is in Colombia, in Argentina. So it's very hard for me to just not fly. So if we could find a way to do this without harming the planet, I think it would be very beneficial. 
how much does it matter what sustainable aviation fuel is made out of, if that makes any sense at all? Yeah, that's crucial. And uh, when we say sustainable aviation fuels, we kind of imply that they're all the same, yeah. but they're not. So you want to be very careful that you're not creating other problems by making aviation be net zero, right? Like we are all in the same planet. So if you're deforesting a very pristine place to create your feedstock for aviation, sure, aviation will get all the gold medals for being net zero. But then in the atmosphere, you'll be releasing all of this carbon from deforesting this pristine forest. Think about that plant I visited with the tanks of beef tallow getting turned into SAF. The biggest carbon saving you get from sustainable aviation fuel comes from replacing petroleum, a fossil fuel, right, with renewables like beef tallow. But beef production is a significant contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, even before factoring in the land use costs. This is probably outside the subject of your research, or, or maybe not. I don't know. You get to decide. But but it does seem like it's almost a, a there. there's no way to win here, you know? Yeah, that, that you raise an important point. So what what I think it's it's not that it's not possible to win, is that you have to be very careful with the steps you take and have a more holistic understanding. You should try to look around whatever topic you want in this case, aviation, to see that while you're fixing aviation, you're not creating another problem. That is the complicated and sometimes contradictory part of what the Biden administration is trying to do. So coming up, why this complicated problem needs federal investment at all. Marketplace is supported by Progressive Insurance, providing direct car insurance rates side by side with other insurance carriers. Customers can see rates and find an option that works for their needs. Now that's Progressive. Learn more at Progressive.com. And by Viking, exploring the world in comfort. With a fleet of small ships, Viking offers travel experiences for the thinking person. Discover more at Viking.com. And by Blue Conic, one platform for all the data modern business requires, all the privacy protection modern customers demand. Blue Conic, customer data in action at blueconic.com. And by Indiana University's Kelly School of Business, developing tomorrow's business leaders through the nationally ranked Kelly Direct Online MBA. More at iu.edu slash online MBA. WNYC is supported by SUFFS, a new musical coming to Broadway this March about the radical suffragists who fought for women's right to vote and changed the course of history. Produced by Hillary Clinton and Malala Yousafzai. More at SUFFSmusical.com. I'm Brian Lehrer. At WNYC, we are committed to bringing you in-depth, local, national, and international reporting that helps you make sense of our world. And at the center of this commitment is you. Listener support keeps us independent and focused on what's really important, reporting the truth. You count on us, we count on you. Please make a contribution now. Visit WNYC.org slash donate or call 888-376-WNYC. You're listening to Marketplace on WNYC. In the 7 o'clock hour of All Things Considered, we're going to get the latest on the Intuitive Machines attempted moon landing this evening. It would be the first successful U.S. soft landing in decades. That and more at 7. This is Marketplace. I'm Kai Rizdal. Our series, Breaking Ground, is all about what happens when the federal government decides to change how deeply involved it is in this economy. Today, that means one industry the Biden administration is trying to jumpstart with the Inflation Reduction Act. Right now, the United States produces about 16 million gallons of sustainable aviation fuel, SAF, every year. The Biden administration wants that to be 3 billion gallons by 2030, and it created grants and tax incentives to help producers ramp up. Hey, sir, it's Kai Rizdal in Los Angeles. How are you? Hello, Kai. Thank you uh, for taking time to go into the studio today. I understand the weather's kind of nasty in Boston. 
It is frigid. That's that's what I hear. It's you know it's frigid here too. It's like it's like fifty seven degrees and we're all dying. Oh so, you know. come on, don't do that. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Gene Gabolas is the founder and CEO of World Energy, one of the biggest SAF producers in the country. It owns the plant that I visited. World Energy has been making biofuels for cars and trucks since the nineteen nineties. Now though. The company is investing $5 billion into scaling up production of sustainable aviation fuel. And if that expansion goes to plan, they're hoping to supply a billion gallons a year by 2030. There are dollars on the line here, both for you and and for your customers. So when you and, I don't know, Ed Bastian, the CEO of Delta, get on the phone, does Ed ever say to you, look, I, I really, really like your product, Gene, but it's just too damn expensive? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> so, the, yeah, yeah the, <laughs> that's all right. But you're, but you've absolutely look. The, the airline industry is extremely operating cost sensitive. Yeah. They they operate on very thin margins. They've got a high exposure and high sensitivity to fuel costs. And if all we were doing was saying, "Hey, we can move your airplanes from where they are to where they need to be just as good as the other stuff does," then there's no need for a, our product. But the other thing that airlines do is service a customer. And they service different customers in different ways. We all know the different parts of the airplane. And there are some people sitting in the front of the plane and some people Mm -hmm. sitting on the back of the plane. Their highest value customers are asking for decarbonization. Last year, Microsoft, yes, that Microsoft, committed to buying 44 million gallons of SAF from World Energy over the next decade. So bear with me for a minute here as I explain why a big technology company is buying sustainable aviation fuel. When we produce sustainable aviation fuel, we push it through a pipe to uh, LAX, but we only sell it as jet fuel. Whatever airline ends up using that SAF out at LAX just pays the cost of conventional jet fuel. Microsoft effectively pays the difference. And in return... Microsoft gets a decarbonization credit. We deposit into Microsoft's account a metric ton of decarbonization. So as its employees take flights or the company ships cargo via air, they can offset the carbon that creates with the decarbonization credit in their accounts. They retire that decarbonization and they need to buy more to do more decarbonized flight. Microsoft isn't doing that, of course, out of the goodness of its corporate heart. It promises to be carbon negative by 2030, removing more carbon from the atmosphere than they put in. The Inflation Reduction Act makes SAF cheaper to incentivize more companies like Microsoft to buy more of it. That is the government in the economy, helping to create a market the way only the federal government can. It creates demand. Demand creates investment, investment creates supply, and then you get into a a virtuous cycle. So moving goods, I get, right? You physically have to get actual stuff from point A to point B. But but isn't a better answer to the consulting firm or Microsoft or anybody else or World Energy staffers, right, who I'm sure, you know, go to meetings and clients and all this jazz? Get on a Zoom, man. Don't burn fossil fuels and get in a plane. Yeah, look, that's a great answer some of the time. But you jump on airplanes, and you'll continue to jump on airplanes. I jump on airplanes. Listen, if I, during COVID, I learned that I could be so much more impactful sitting and looking into a 2D screen. Mm-hmm. But then when we emerged out of that, we realized that that's not going to solve everything. We often need to fly. And when we do, we should do it in a more responsible way, in a more sustainable way. Um what is the the government's role in this industry in in getting us there? Well, the government's critical, and it's neither just the government or just the private sector. It's the it's the government and private sector working in concert that is going to enable us to decarbonize aviation. There is a limit to how much the federal government's going to be able to spend in sustainable aviation fuels because there are many demands on on taxpayer money. I guess my question is. How badly do you, as a guy running World Energy, need the government to help you out in in doing what you want to do? So, look, the the purpose of these early investments 
are much like the the early investments that the government makes in uh, all kinds of things from uh, the health sector to uh, computer science to uh, defense. So many of the list goes on and on and on where the government money stimulates private money, which stimulates innovation, which stimulates more and more demand, which gets the whole thing going. So, they, so the idea here is not that the government uh, forever subsidizes an activity. The idea is that the government stand up an activity that we tap into the demand for. Once it gets going, once it's really rocking and rolling, you don't need as much government intervention, but you do in the early going. I'm going to say this again, that right now, sustainable aviation fuel accounts for less than 1% of total jet fuel consumption. For all the, the hard work um, that your folks out of the Paramount plant are doing, it's kind of a drop in the bucket, right? It is. It is absolutely a drop in the bucket. And so there are two ways to look at the drop in the bucket. One is to say, gee, it's so small and so insufficient. We ought not do it. And I hear that all the time. And there's a real temptation to just say, look, if you can't do everything, don't do anything. I don't buy into that. That's not how innovation happens. Innovation happens when you do what you can do today and keep doing it. We have got to transition how we do energy. And there will be trillions of dollars spent to do it. And the countries that invest early and build capacity early will be the beneficiaries of that transition. And those that decide to be the last ones in won't. Last thing and then I'll let you go. Um, you strike me as a guy who has a sense of urgency about what he does and that, in fact, you consider this a crusade in the secular sense. Is there a way to make this go faster? Is there a way to make it go faster? Uh, yeah, well, I think you're, you're in, based in your question is the answer. We cannot wait. The way this is going to go faster is to build the market. Supply will chase demand. And in combination with, and it's not one or the other, the government investments in terms of tax credits and the private sector investment in terms of long-term contracts that combination is what accelerates this progress. Like I said, the federal government putting its thumb on the scale of industry is not new. What is new are the industries the federal government is investing in and the scope of the problems it's trying to solve. This industry, sustainable aviation fuel, didn't even exist 20 years ago. And if it's able to scale up without causing other problems, it could help us solve an existential threat to the planet. But that is not going to happen without the government in this economy. Marketplace is supported by C3 Generative AI, verified traceable answers, secure, hallucination-free, LLM agnostic, IP liability-free. Learn more at C3.ai. And by Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, whose scientists laid the foundation for CDK4-6 inhibitors, which are increasing the survival rate for many advanced breast cancers. DanaFarber.org slash everywhere. And by Condor Airlines, offering nonstop service from 13 U.S. gateways to Frankfurt, Germany, plus seamless connections to over 100 European travel destinations at Condor.com. This final note on the way out today, an observation of sorts. Less than a mile from Marketplace World Headquarters here in downtown Los Angeles, a new billboard has gone up from Delta Airlines. It reads, Destination More Sustainable Travel. Billboard has gone up. From Delta Airlines, it reads, Destination More Sustainable Travel. We're accelerating our push, the billboard says, to source sustainable aviation fuel. The company says they have signed agreements for more than 200 million gallons of SAF. Thing is, Delta uses more than 3 billion gallons of jet fuel every single year. As I believe I said a time or two in the last half hour, 
drop in the bucket. John Buckley, John Gordon, Rick Carr, Diantha Parker, Amanda Peacher, and Stephanie Seek are the Marketplace editing staff. Amir Bibawi is the managing editor. I'm Kai Rizdal. We will see you tomorrow, everybody. This is APM. Support for WNYC comes from Universal Pictures.